What's going on everyone? Max Power Baseball here, back with another video. It's been a while, so hope everybody's doing well. My Giants are battling it out in the playoffs, so hopefully they can continue and keep going all the way to cap off this amazing, unexpected year. I finally got in my order from COMC recently. As with other companies in the hobby, over the last year and a half or so, they've seen a huge increase in their business and unfortunately have struggled to keep up with the increased demand. So their processing and shipping times have gotten extremely long and slow. This is the second order I've ever placed with COMC. And in this order, I got 97 cards. Some were eBay purchases that I had transferred to my account but the bulk were from the COMC site. I bought the first of these cards during their Black Friday sale last year, but just kept everything stored in my account. I waited to request shipment because at the time I was planning on moving soon after. I didn't want there to be any issues. So after I moved and added a bunch more cards to my order, I requested shipment in May. It was finally delivered to me in late September. So it took over four months, which is really unacceptably slow. They have released some communications to their customers that they've made a bunch of hires and moved to a larger building and are working to streamline the process. So hopefully that makes a difference and improves their service. I really do hope they get their issues fixed since it really can be a great platform for set and player collectors where there's a ton of low to mid-range cards available. And speaking of that, of the 97 cards in my order, I did get 40 new cards for my Will Clark Super Collection, plus some Giants, Rookies, and Relic cards for other sets I'm working on. Here's the highlights. First up, I got this 1986 star Jose Canseco, which features Will Clark. This is part of the Canseco set, but it's just a cameo of Clark on the card. I typically don't consider these Clark cards, but since he's featured so prominently, I got it. There's also a green version of this, which I do still need. And then there's this 1986 Topps Black Gold ABCD Redemption and features tiny images of all 44 cards in the black gold set. The redeemed version is the same on the front but has a checklist on the back. These are pretty tough to find. I also got this 93 upper deck. This is the gold hologram. Let's see if it shows up. So the gold hollow is from the complete set, but only one out of every 15 sets in the case had the gold hologram. So these are also pretty tough for a 1993 card. And then I got a few 95 stadium club. These are the members only parallels. You can see the gold foil stamp on the top right. I got the 96 Finest Refractor. This is the uncommon card. Uh, Will also has two other cards in this Finest set, which I already did have. And of the Finest Refractors, I did pick up the number one card on my want list earlier this year, which is the 93 Finest Refractor. So now I only need one more refractor, which is the extremely tough and expensive 99 gold refractor. Next is the 96 Pinnacle Starburst. This one's a, a parallel of the base card, but just with a dufex finish. It looks pretty cool. The 96 Ultra Prime Leather, the gold medallion version. These came one out of every 80 packs. And 
97 Studio Press Proof Silver. These ones had a print run of 1500. Like the rainbow hollow foil on the sides here. And then one of the favorite cards I picked up in this order is the 98 Pinnacle Artist Proof. This one's got a gold dufex finish on it. Uh, and you can see the Artist Proof stamp in the lower left. These are one out of every 39 packs. I got a 2013 Allen and Ginter Mini, and this one has the ANG back on it. And I got the 2018 Topps Chrome 83 Design Orange Refractor. This one's numbered out of 25, and was the last one I needed for the rainbow, minus the Superfractor, of course. And I did pick up a few autographed cards. This one is the 2012 Tier 1 Crowd Pleaser, numbered out of 245. 2013 Spring Fever, numbered out of 44. 2013 Museum Collection, numbered out of 399. And the 2020 Gold Label Framed Auto, this is the unnumbered base version. I did pick up a few cheaper Barry Bonds inserts. This is the 96 Studio Hit Parade, numbered out of 5,000. It's just a really cool, original-looking insert from the 90s. The 99 Tops Hands of Gold die cut. Ninety nine upper deck holographics, which is just a fantastic looking base card, and this is only around a dollar. Got the ninety nine Pacific Prism and the two thousand Pacific Prism. Also got some more Giants cards. This is the 2011 Topps Diamond Collection Buster Posey. The Rookie Cup second year card. Really love these Diamond Anniversary cards. The shine on these, just amazing. And the Rookie of the Year version. And then a 2007 SP Rookie Edition Tim Lincecum. And this is, of course, designed after the 93 SP. Got a 2011 Topps Lineage Pablo Sandoval Auto, which was only about $5. A 2017 Bowman Chrome Blue 70th Anniversary Refractor of Elliot Ramos. He's the number four prospect in the Giants organization. He's an outfielder currently in AAA, and he's only 22, so he should make his debut next season. Mike Yastrzemski. 2015 Bowman Chrome. 2019 Bowman Chrome Hunter Bishop, 
who's the number six prospect in the Giants org. Twenty twenty Bowman Chrome Patrick Bailey, who is the number eight prospect. And 2020 Tops Update, Joey Bart, who is the number two prospect in the Giants org. And this is, of course, modeled after the 1989 Tops design. And then I got a few Relic cards for a set that I'm working on, the 2016 Panini Pantheon. These are the 500 Home Run Club Relics. And these are all numbered out of 199. So we got the Barry Bonds, Reggie Jackson, Mike Schmidt, Gary Sheffield, Barry Bonds, 600 home run, and 700 home run which this one has a wristband relic, which is pretty cool and unusual. And then from that same set, they also have a run of 3,000 hit players. So this is Carl Yastrzemski. And another set I'm working on is the 2018 Triple Threads Legends Relics. This is Frank Thomas and numbered out of 27. And then finally, I picked up this Topps Project 2020 Keith Shore Ken Griffey Jr. This one has a print run of 99,000, which is the iceberg that sank the Project 2020 ship. It was only about $2.50, so I figured, why not pick it up? So that does it for the highlights. I did pick up a bunch more lower-end Clarks, some Bo Jackson cards for my brother, and some other random rookies. As of October 11th, when I'm filming this, my Super Collection count is now at 1,736 unique cards. I do have nearly every base card, so it's getting harder and more expensive to find cards that I need for past year's products. But Clark has been in most new top sets for the last several years, and after a three-year hiatus, is back in the Panini products in 2021. So there's still plenty of new stuff for me to go after, which is both good and bad, because the chase will never end. Thanks for watching. In the comments, let me know what your experience with COMC has been. Be sure to smash the like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. And keep on collecting.